Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Symphonia at Home. Today, we're here with Andres Cardenas, guest conductor and violin for the Symphonia. Hello. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So what, what originally got you interested in music? Well, you know, my parents love music. The, my father came from a rather poor background, uh, but he decided that he wanted to educate himself as much as he could. So while he was a kid, uh, he often went to concerts and went to the ballet, went to the opera in Havana. And during the 50s, late 40s and 50s, Havana was a very big hub of music. All the greatest musicians in the world went to Havana to either perform with the Havana Philharmonic or conduct or solo with them. And uh, so I still have a lot of programs that my father gave me from the 40s and 50s when he was a kid. Uh, going to these concerts. And so whenever we were at home, he was always blasting the stereo with something, you know, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, Vivaldi's Four Seasons. And even though he's not a musician, he's an architect, uh, he would roam around the house, you know, pretending to conduct and, wow. you know, all the mannerisms of a conductor. And my mother was a pianist and, and played the mandolin when she was young. So there was music in the house, and uh, I gravitated towards it, and uh, that's sort of what got my interest peaked. The other thing was that uh, that was very fortuitous is that uh, when I was uh, nine years old, my father brought home a recording of a man named Viktor Tretyakov. He won the Tchaikovsky competition in 1966. Um, and so the year after he won it, he brought home this recording of this Paganini concerto, and I remember telling him, hey, Dad, listen to all those violin players. He said, no, that's one guy. That's one guy playing that. And I just said, I want to do that. That's incredible. Wow. And uh, it just so happened that shortly thereafter, a couple of months later, a lady came to my elementary school and said that she was going to begin a, um, a uh, school music program and that anybody who wanted to play an instrument should show up to this orientation meeting. And so I told my parents, come on, we have to go. Uh, and I said to them, I'm going to be a violinist. And we went to the orientation meeting and all the instruments were out on tables and demonstrations and stuff. And I just went straight to the violin. And, you know, it's one of those things that people talk about, you know, like a bolt of lightning or a divine intervention or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I walked into that room and I knew that the violin was going to be my, my life's work. I just knew it. And I knew that I would never do anything else. And, uh, and I hadn't played a note yet in my life, but I already knew. And oh. so, yeah, it was, a, it, it was not a decision. You know, a lot of people say, oh, when did you decide to go into music? I never decided. I never decided. It, it was a calling. And uh, there was nothing else for me. I couldn't fight it or I couldn't deny it or I couldn't... Uh, you know, there was, there was just no, there was no decision to be made. It just was made for me. That's incredible. I know you've sent along a couple of videos for us to enjoy today. Tell us a little about the videos you sent over. Well, one of them uh, is from the finals of the Tchaikovsky International Violin Competition. This is the most prestigious and most famous and certainly the most difficult violin competition to uh, win in the world for a lot of different reasons. The year that I was there in 1982 uh, was still the height of the Cold War. And uh, for an American to walk in and attempt to win was very, very difficult to this day. Um, in violin, there's only been one American winner in over 50 years, and that was Elmar Oliveira. And, um, and since Van Cliburn in the 50s, uh, no American has won first prize uh, in Moscow. So it was very, very hard to go into their backyard and and try to uh, try to beat the Russians at their own game there. Um, but it was a great experience, and I wound up winning second prize. And um, and so this video is from the finals, um, playing the third movement of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. But mind you, what what people don't realize when they see that video is that I had already played, by the time the third moment of the Tchaikovsky came around, I had already played the entire Sibelius concerto just before that and the first two movements 
of the Tchaikovsky. So I had already played five movements of concertos before I played this third movement of the Tchaikovsky. And uh, so it was a, a test of stamina and strength and concentration. It was jammed to the rafters. And of course, when you're playing in front of the jury, which are all the greatest violinists in the world at the time, they're all sitting in a jury in front of you. So you've got to have nerves of steel and you got to be tough as nails and focused and try to play your absolute best. And it's hot. And, you know, you're at the end of the, the, the final round and you've been already competing for three weeks straight. Well, let's play the video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The other video I sent, a little more unusual, uh, is my um, video of the Chanson Poème. Uh, I'm particularly connected to that piece because much like you and I have a genealogy, um, you know, who our parents are, our grandparents, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, with violin playing, my teacher, Joseph Kingold, studied with Eugène Isaïe. And Chausson wrote the poem for Isaïe. And so I'm sort of a direct descendant of that piece's dedicatee. So Isaïe was sort of my musical grandfather. And, and so I have a direct connection to this piece. And, wow. and, the, ver that. and the version that I play is a version that was unknown until more recently uh, because Isaïe did not have a chance to write the original to his liking. And, uh, and so I'm playing the revised version, which very, very few people even know about. Um, so that, that's why that um, video is special to me because of the, uh, the piece itself, the version that I'm playing, and my connection to Isaïe and Chausson directly. All right, let's play the next video.
Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. You're most welcome. Do you have any messages for your fellow musicians here at the Symphonia in Boca Raton? Oh, I am so excited to play with them. <laughs> That's one thing. First, um, I've heard about the Symphonia for quite a long time. And uh, I was able to meet Jeff, uh, your music director, uh, recently. Uh, I think it was actually four years ago I met him for the first time at the inaugural Elmar Oliveira International Violin Competition in Boca. And uh, he came and talked to me and, uh, you know, he invited me to come and conduct at some point and uh, we became friendly. And uh, so finally we found a coordinated date and hopefully it'll still happen and that the pandemic doesn't derail our plans. But uh, I'm very excited to come to, to Boca. I love, I love Florida. I love Boca. I'm sure that eventually I'm going to move there, you know, when, uh, when I start winding down my career a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm on a, well, right now I'm not, but normally I'm on a very, very hectic 100 concert a year uh, schedule. So it's, it's pretty trying to be on the road all the time. And, and I also teach 10 students at Carnegie Mellon, and I run the, the orchestra program here. So uh, it's a pretty hectic life that I lead, and I have two kids. And so with, with all of that all combined, it's a very, uh, it's a very full life, but uh, I'm looking forward to a day where I can just soft pedal it a little bit and take it a little bit easier. Maybe get it down to 80 constants a year instead of 100. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we can't wait to see you. Hopefully, the sooner the better. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? You know, um, at a time in our country that we're facing so many social dilemmas and uh, the country is re-examining what we're about. We're re-examining ourselves, our behavior, our thoughts, our, our uh, approach to our fellow citizens. Uh, as you know, I, I really would like to encourage everybody to remember that music is something that's so universal that transcends every possible social ill. Music is for everybody. Music is about everybody. Music is to bring people together, to share with people. Music is about teamwork. It's, it's about working with one another for a common cause, always in the service of something bigger than yourself. It's not about you being the big time soloist or you being the big conductor or the musicians being the big musicians playing a big symphony or something. It's really about our music making together. It's always about being together and it's always about doing it for a higher cause. And music is such a wonderful example to our, to our, to every society that it's about cooperation. It's about really loving one another. It's about trying to, trying to make something beautiful. And it's about really truly just collaborating, just being with one another and having this cause together and having a common goal. And if we could just implement that in our daily life, you know, towards all of our fellow people, our fellow citizens, you know, look towards music, look towards music for some comfort, for some inspiration, and really for some education in the sense of how we all collaborate with one another. In music, it's not successful if you don't. And so most of the time, music is very successful. Everybody look towards that. Everybody guide yourselves a little bit towards it and let's try to work together and be together and love each other and have a common goal as a real society. What a powerful message. Thank you, Andres. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to talk with you, Rachel. It's a pleasure to talk, speak with you and we cannot wait to see you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Head to thesymphonia.org for more information. Continue following us here on Facebook. We can't wait to see you all just as soon as possible. Take care.